Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, True Crime with Jess Rose. How you all doing? Right, I just want to explain if I am wonky, just that let me explain my setup. I've got a ring light and it's attaches and everything else, but to turn the ring light on, which other YouTubers look amazing, it reflects off my glasses. I have said it before so I can't see it. So I still use the attachment, but I can't use the ring light, so it's all wobbly. I'm just having a rant. I'm just having a rant. I'm just sharing that with you. Um so yeah, if I look a little bit wonky, which I hope I don't, that's why. So I hope you're all okay out there. I feel summer's coming. It's on its way. Can you believe that this time next week? was when everything shut down last year how scary is that that whole year's gone by like, that you can literally just wipe out because nothing happened none of us could do anything it's crazy but i'm really happy the kids are back at school they're settling i hope all of you are all set starting to settle and open up i don't know about over in the states i know there's some States that aren't open, there's some that are. So I just hope you're all keeping well. Okay, so today's story, it's from a show. It was on Five Star, which is, I'm not sure if everyone gets that. It's on Sky, um, and it's a show. I have done a story from it before, and it's When Kids Kill. I've actually done two stories. It was, um, i done the one where they were the youngest double murderers in Britain and it was the girl who killed her mom with her boyfriend well her boyfriend did it and her little sister I've done that story um and also the Angela Wrightson story so they're from this show um and this one is titled bullied bullied to death Ugh. um it's a hard one because I think we all know that bullying goes on you know, it starts from a very... I, I was shocked at how young it does start. I suppose in my... I, I don't remember being, like, four and five in reception or kindergarten, uh, obviously, as you call it, over in America. And... But it starts that young. And that's crazy to me. Um, you know, that, and then continues obviously through school. It does continue throughout life. I think people just get a little bit more clever with it and don't necessarily do it to people's faces. They kind of be on the back. You know, it carries on throughout all life and it's just such a sad part of society that I don't know how you would stop it. I think schools try, parents try, uh, some. But it's, it's, or, and what it is now, when I was younger, if there was a problem at school, once you left school, providing that person didn't leave by you, it, you could go home and it was okay and, you know, you'd go back into school the next day, but at least at home you had that bit of safety and security. But kids now don't have that because of social media. And the amount of platforms out there, they can be got at in so many different ways. Obviously, Facebook's a major one. Snapchat's more of a kid's one. Um, a, a teenagers, I mean. And it's just brutal because they can be got at at all times. And I think that's why maybe we've seen an increase in the you know, mental health issues and everything else. Because kids aren't getting a break from their bully you know if they're being bullied at school they can be got out at home and it's so upsetting um you know i know there are age uh, restrictions on most platforms but kids just don't they don't do that you can just quite easily put a different day at birth there's no way of um the social media people monitoring that because if they're putting a fake Date of birth. You know what I mean? They can get they can get access to it. I'm rambling now, but um I just feel really bad for kids now that they can't escape if they are being bullied. So this story is about a young girl. Now her name's Rosie. 
um her full name is rose it's rosemary i think it's pronounced but it's spelled a little bit different rosemary buxall but everyone know, know her as rosie and um she was born in brazil um but when she was two she was adopted to a pastor and his wife um her mom I, 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 did, I did hear drugs mentioned um i don't know much about that it wasn't elaborated on but rosie was adopted at two and she was doing quite well in brazil you know intelligent girl beautiful looking girl and um yeah life was going good for rosie but then her parents moved to it's blackheath in southeast london um so they came over to england and southeast london the kids are they're a lot more straight wise um stories i've heard of brazil i would have thought maybe rosie was but maybe she was a little bit more sheltered you know with her adoptive family um so when but when she comes to london like i say the kids are a little bit more straight boys there a little bit feistier and it was a little bit of a shock to rosie when she came over it was all very different and it said that her personality started to change from then she wasn't getting on very well at school um obviously grades dropped she change she was arguing with her adoptive parents um you know i think she was just going through a hard time and at 16 you know you know what you like anyway your emotions are all over the place and to go through such an upheaval and then to come to a very different um i suppose culture really um it was just a bit of a shock to her culture shock i suppose you would say so she was falling out with her adoptive parents. She was at college, but at college she met a girl called Kemi. Now, Kemi's real name is, and I'm going to try and pronounce it correctly, it's Oluwa Kemi Jose, or ha it's spelled A J O S E, so it's A Jose Jose. I'm not too sure, and I do apologise if I got it wrong, but she was nicknamed Kemi. Um, now, by this point, Rosie was 19 when she met Kemi. Or possibly 18 when she met her, but at this point in the story, she's 19. Kemi's 17. Now, Kemi also knew a girl called TJ. Now, TJ's real name is Hattie Khan, but she was called TJ. Now, TJ is 13. Very straight boys, very feisty. Came from quite a violent background. Had you know a lot of domestic violence. TJ, you see a photo of her. You know all three girls are very pretty girls. Um, TJ, she's thirteen, so she's very cute looking. Um, looks like butter wouldn't melt, but apparently, just a very violent, um, arrogant girl, even at such a young age. You know, she'd started being violent and getting into trouble from, I think, 11. You know, so she was also in the care system. Kemi in the care system. You know, they just... And Rosie, they all, they all just kind of... Well, Kemi and Rosie kind of, you know, drifted together. TJ didn't like Rosie. Even though there was such an age gap, TJ being 13, Rosie being 19... She didn't like her because Rosie was a very pretty girl and boys liked her and TJ didn't like her. It, it, it's just mind-boggling to me because of the age gap. It, it, I know it's not a generation gap, I understand that, but in 13 to 19, although it's only six years, if it was 23 to 29, you wouldn't bat an eyelid, but 13 to 19, you go through so many changes yourself in those years. It's just crazy to think that there was a competitive aspect of this. But Kemi, um, in May of 2008, was placed in, if you imagine a big house, it was kind of a, a hostel that, um, let me just see, Greenwich Council um, had for, for teenagers that were in trouble. It was unsupervised. 
and they just placed Kemi there. Now there was a young girl, no, Kemi was put on the top floor. There was a young girl called Holly, she's 15. You see her on the show, doesn't seem that young at all. Obviously in the show she's older, but she's still, you can tell she's a very mature girl. Um, she was there just before Kemi moved in. And she said she thought she had the whole house to herself, which she did for not too long. She said, but when she met Kemi, also coming in with Kemi was TJ and Rosie. And Kemi was allowing them to, to stay there with her. Now, where she was, it was just an attic. It wasn't even as big as Holly's flat or the looks of it. You see it on the show. It was just an attic in a big house. So to put three young teenage girls you know two of them who were from quite violent backgrounds now kemi she was from a broken home but kemi had um, a lot of mental health issues very easily led um and it was said that tj tj was kind of the boss the young 13 year olds and kemi was kind of her muscle and TJ was so manipulative that she convinced Kemi that Rosie wasn't anything to them. And they'd started picking on Rosie. Rosie being the oldest out of the three, but like I say, the most sheltered. Um, now, there was a lady on the show called Raffalina. And her son... Uh, George, his name is, he was 15, 16, sorry, he was moving into the bottom floor. Now, again, his mom, Raffalina seemed like she was very involved in her son's life, but maybe they just didn't get on at home. So he, again, quite young, 16, but he had the bottom flat. And when they were moving in, Raffalina was helping paint and, you know, get it nice for her son. And she said that she's seen the three girls come in very loud, you know, very kind of obnoxious. Not Rosie, more TJ. Um, you know, and TJ come up and was like, what are you doing here? You know. <laughs> and uh, Raffalina said she was just a bit taken aback by how um, loud TJ and Kemi were. And she said Kemi was stood there kind of messing with the paint and splashing it on herself. Very, very strange behaviour. But she realised they were drinking. So they all went upstairs. Anyway, Holly said later on that night, she heard a lot going on up there. And the girls came down and it was Holly's birthday. And I think they'd knocked on for something from her. And she says, oh, it's my birthday. I'm going out. And uh, they kind of, she said they were kind of talking, but she could tell even then that Rosie was a bit more reserved and TJ was the boss of the, the three of them. Um, and she said she, she felt tension between the three. But she went out, Holly did, like she said, and they went upstairs. Now, she, she did say it seemed that there was, was some boys up there. Um, and it turns out that one of these lads, who was 20 had took a liking to Rosie. Problem was, TJ liked him. He's 20. Now, most normal, now I know we have other cases between 20 and 13, but most 20-year-old lads aren't going to look at a 13-year-old little girl. And TJ didn't like that at all. So... Into the next day, we go to Saturday, the 17th of May, 2008, okay? Um, and Raffalina um, had heard screaming upstairs, but she'd noticed it the day before and the night before that. This was kind of a three-day binge for these girls. I don't know where they were getting the alcohol from. Um, apparently, there was a lot of alcohol consumed up there. Um, the boys had all gone these lads that had been at the party the night before, but obviously there was still rows going on over this boy. So Raffalina actually took Rosie aside because they were kind of coming in and out of the of the, the house, the, the flat. Flats, it's a big house. Um, and at one point when they were coming in and out, Raffalina gets Rosie because she said she could tell she, she didn't fit in. She shouldn't have been there. 
you know, this, you could see she was so out of her element, even at 19. And she took her aside and she said, let me take you home. And um, Rosie was like, no. And Rafaelina was like, surely you, you would prefer to go home than continue this? Because it was quite obvious that uh, TJ and Kemi were now turning on Rosie. Rafaelina had seen them kind of pushing her and, you know, just picking on her really when they were walking in and out. Um, and then she offered to take her to her home, I believe. But Rosie just, she didn't want to go. I don't know why. I genuinely don't. I don't know why you'd stick around when someone, two girls are treating you like that. Because by this point, Kemi's been not, you know, she's been bold to her as well. So, the fighting and the screaming throughout the Saturday morning and afternoon is getting worse. Um, and George, Rafaelina's son, Rafaelina had gone to the shops, I think, and when she came back, George was sat outside and uh, he said to his mum, it's really bad up there. It's really, really bad up there. He said, I heard them screaming. And when I went up, um, I think it was George and a couple of his friends, uh, Rafaelina's son, and when they opened the door... Uh, I think George got his phone out because they were battering Rosie in that attic. And he says, I'm going to record this. You need to stop. And they just carried on. So he does record what's going on. And he shows Rafaelina, his mum. And she said, you could see um, TJ kind of with her leg cocked up on the bed, leaning over Rosie, who was sat down. They were beating her, they were punching her, they were spraying um, hair, some say deodorant, some say hairspray, but it was an aerosol, they were spraying that in her eyes, pulling her hair, they were just battering her. Um, so, Rafaelina, when she sees this uh, recording, runs up the stairs, banging on the door, and she said they were screaming that loud, they couldn't hear her banging. And she said, and all of a sudden, it went quiet. So, okay, she's banging on the door. And next thing you know, TJ and Kemi run past her down the stairs. So, when she walks into the attic, she expects fully to see Rosie there. She doesn't know how Rosie's going to be when she walks in. She already knows they've been giving her a hiding. So, when she walks in, Rosie's not there. What she does notice in the sink is a footprint in the sink. So obviously she's looking around. She's like, she knows Rosie was in there. She hasn't gone anywhere. So she was very confused. And then she starts hearing shouting outside. So Rafaelina runs downstairs outside. And um, when she gets out there, Rosie's on the floor. She's come out of that third... Now this house... It's not your normal two-storey house. It's three storeys and it's a big house. And she's come out of the window and she's on the floor. And Rafaelina, she does get very upset at this point in the show. She says her leg was obviously broken, twisted behind her. Her face was all swollen. Um, her arm was obviously broke. And she was dying. Um, and the two girls, Kemi and TJ, did try to run, um, but the lads stopped them. So what? It's got kind of a big driveway as well. So while they kind of stood there, and the lads, the lads being um, Rafaelina's son and his friends, who obviously had the ground floor flat, um, TJ goes to pick up Rosie's phone, and Kemi goes, "Put it down, fingerprints." So she throws it down and then goes, it serves you right. And starts calling Rosie a whore and other names that I, you know, I obviously can't say. The girl's dying on the floor and that, that, there was no shock. There was no remorse. There was like, oh my God. There was just vile coming out of this girl's my what she's called it vitra just utter disgust at this girl lying on the floor dying 
no Rafaelina tried um, she did have uh, medical training I believe there was nothing she could do nothing and and Rosie died there on the floor just I think Rafaelina was just so shocked that from a teenage fighting as she thought it was to know there's a girl dead on the floor after coming out of a third floor window now the reason I keep saying coming out is there was only three people in that attic at that time so no one knows was she forced out of that window was she told to kill herself and jump out the window or did she just try and escape them was she just trying to get away from them and fell one we don't know um, so it said that as that all of this was going on, there was a police car just driving past and George ran out, grabbed the policeman, he come for the ambulance, um, and the girls are arrested at, at the scene. Well, they're kind of brought, everyone's brought in, but it's quite obvious who, who, the, who knows what's going on, the culprits behind it are. Um, everyone's questioned. And um, TJ, 13, I keep saying 13 years old, and I do do a lot of cases and stories where the kids are quite young, but it always amazes me when you get a child who's 13, and Emma Kenny, uh, who also appears on the show, she's a resident on a lot of shows, a resident professional, and um, she says that TJ even though she's 13, when you think about it, a couple of years ago, she was in junior school. So she said she's still a child. So she still throws tantrums. She can't, she hasn't learnt to um, control her emotions yet. So she's still very much a kid who's been caught out. And so in the police station, she gives a no comment interview. No comment. No comment. No remorse. Doesn't care. Just and what I wanted that boy, and she she took him. So I don't care that kind of attitude. Kemi, on the other hand, um, basically her her statement was she wasn't in the room, she wasn't in that attic when Rosie come out the window. So that's her kind of defence, Kemi's. Now, the police have seen the footage of um, them beating Rosie up, so they've got that. But the thing is, and what the police were struggling with um, when putting a case together, is the time frame between the recording being made by George, Rafaelina's son, and Rafaelina going up the stairs. So there's a time gap. So the defence's argument is... Well, yes, they obviously had that fight. Um, tried to call it uh, like a playful banter that was going on. TJ tried to say that after that recording was made, they were laughing and joking. Trying to say that the time gap between Rosie on the floor from you know and the and the the recording that they had nothing to do with her death you know so it's up to the prosecution to prove that it, it it did in fact lead to her death so in October 2009 they couldn't be charged with murder but the charge was uh, they were charged with manslaughter and both pleaded not guilty marvellous um, when they were in the court it was said that Kemi was heavily medicated she was taken straight to a mental facility um and Rafaelina said that she just looked um docile heavily drugged up um obviously didn't speak whereas tj very cute had, must have been prepped by her solicitor so when the jury was in and obviously the witnesses were being called. She was sat up straight. She was looking very remorseful and 
you know, oh my God. And the minute the jury would leave the courtroom, she'd rest back, she'd be chewing gum, she'd be laughing. Apparently in one of the um, kinds of, you know, when they have a bit of a rest or lunch or, you know, in the canteen, even with Rosie's parents, who were also in this canteen, TJ is ripping her barrister's uh, wig off, um, running around. She's a child. That's what she is. And that's how she was acting. Um, just, could you imagine being Rosie's parents and watching that? Knowing this is the girl that drove your child to kill themselves. Not, oh, sorry, I've said that there, haven't I? I can't say that because obviously no one knows when I'm in that room. That's my view. I better be very careful. That's my view. They drove her to that. And luckily though, um, when the uh, mobile phone footage that George had taken was shown to the jury, the reporter that was there said the courtroom was so quiet and all you could hear was the slapping and punching and the violence in that video and the terror in Rosie's eyes. Um, so based on that and the fact that Raffalina, when she uh, stood in the witness stand and says that when she knocked on that door, Kemi and TJ came running out and ran past her, that put Kemi in the attic when Rosie came out the window. So, all aspects, the defence, this case kind of fell apart um, and they were both found guilty, which I'm really happy about. I genuinely am because there has to be a punishment for bullies. There has to be. You can't just go around bullying somebody and think there's going to be no consequence to that. You can't. In life, you know, no matter what age, you need to know you can't treat people like that and get away with it. Um, and it's just devastating that it ended the way it did. And as we know, this is something that's happening a lot. So it's, I was, when I, when I, was researching this story I was so relieved that they were found guilty the sentence though TJ was given um eight years in a youth as a youth cust in a youth custody order she only served four um no she was actually out when she was 17 so don't forget this was 2009 so um she was out in 2013 that's right released in 2013 it said that she was 17 when she was released tj i've looked i can't see whether she's got into any more trouble since she learned a lesson i genuinely I, i've looked i can't see whether she's just dropped off the radar since and wants to get on with her love i don't know um now kemi she was detained indefinitely in a mental health facility um I've read that she's still there. It's indefinite. So she obviously um, never should have been left on her own in that in that house. She needed help. She was um, she was led as well into the uh, bullying of Rosie because don't forget she was friends with Rosie. They met at college. They were friends. They got on very well. Um, and then with the manipulation of TJ, you know was all it took for to turn her against Rosie. Um, you know, she yeah, she, I think she's kept sedated a lot of the time from what I've read. She's a big girl, you know, so, um, yeah. It's sad all round. It's sad all round. Um, obviously, heartbreaking for Rosie's parents. They're the real victims and Rosie's the real victim. We can look at Kemi and we can look at TJ and we can say, you know, their circumstances... TJ coming from a violent upbringing, a violent family, um, you know, Kemi with her mental health. Is, you know, there is, I can't sympathise, I can't, I know, 
the the way of thinking now is to show sympathy to them because they had a hard time. I can't. I can't because a girl's dead from their behaviour. You know, they should have got help. There's no two ways about it. They never, you know, they never should have been allowed to their own devices. You put teenage girls, teenage boys, anyone in a building on their own with uh, access to alcohol, don't know how they got it, whether they got someone to buy it for them. But there's, it's not going to end well. It's not. So Greenwich Council no longer... It's no longer common practice to leave children slash teenagers in unsupervised accommodation. No longer common practice. So does that mean they still do on occasion? I don't know, but that's that's the statement that's been put forward. I have read that Rosie's parents have since said they forgive Kemi. I didn't see TJ's name mentioned. I don't know if it's because of Kemi's mental health issues and they don't feel that she was to blame for what happened. I don't, they're very forgiving people. I don't know if I would be so forgiving in the same circumstances. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just such a shame. They say, you know, it was um, one of the worst cases of bullying in, in with regards to the outcome. And even on the show, the girl presenting it, um, Leah, her name is, can't think of her last name. She's, ever, she's a really good presenter, but um, she was looking at footage that you can easily find online of girls getting bullied. There was one where she was telling her to take, take your shoes off, give me your shoes and get on your knees and, you know, just humiliating the girl. And again, it goes to this uh, generation with technology that even though bullying has always gone on, because now it will be recorded and watched by so many people, that the bully themselves will go further than they possibly might have had they not been recorded and going online and being seen by everybody. I don't know why you would be proud of that. I don't know if that's a thing now to show how amazing you are that you can bully someone who obviously won't fight you back. I don't, years ago, that was called a coward. I don't know what it's called now. But years ago, if you were fighting somebody that obviously couldn't fight you back and didn't want to fight you back and was crying and begging you to stop, that was called a coward. And you would get hit for that. So I don't know why now that's praised and that's a pat on the back. I'm not too sure where that mentality comes from. Um, so, yeah, that's just my own little rant about it. I have thrown a few of my own opinions in there. So please don't come at me. It's just how I feel about it. I just feel so sorry that it is an age-old thing. It will always go on. We know that. But we've just got to do better. We've got to do better. We've got to teach our kids that, you know, you don't. You don't pick on somebody like, you know, that just because you can, just because they're not going to argue back with you. They're just going to sit and take it and you feel great about yourself. It's just, it's not the way to go. And you know what, what you usually see is these bullies, once they become adults, become advocates for, you know, the, the bullied and the downtrodden and sometimes you're like, oh my God. But, you know, it's good that they've changed and it's good that that's their outlook now and they're not still bullying, but sometimes I just think, oh, God, it's kind of sickening when you know what that what they were capable of. Anyway, I'm rambling. So that was the story of um, Rosie. Let me tell you her full name again. It was Rosemary Boxall. Um, beautiful girl. Bullied to death. And it's from the show When Kids Kill. And, um, yeah, just a really upsetting one, really. It's just just quite sad that this is the world we're living in now and you get a pat on the back for picking on someone who can't fight you. So, um, thank you again for joining me. I'll calm down now. <laughs> and um, I will see you again soon. Thank you to all my new subscribers as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. If you've got any um, 
stories you'd like me to look at, um, you know, anything I've said that you don't agree with, if you'd like to let me know. But um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again soon. Thank you.